So, as I said, my name is Gabi Nakibli. <laughs> I will be presenting uh, this talk on the routing uh, table, uh, which I will be presenting uh, a new and powerful uh, routing attack. Uh, the reason this attack is uh, powerful is because it uh, exploits a vulnerability which actually lies uh, uh, within the standard of the OSPF routing protocol. Um, um, now, OSPF is one of the common uh, routing protocols uh, around. And um, since it, the vulnerability lies within the standard of the protocol, as you will shortly see, many router vendors are indeed affected by this uh, vulnerability. Um, this is actually a second part of uh, our work or our research on OSPF security. The first part we presented here at Black Hat two years ago. And uh, now we push the envelope even further and present uh, an even more uh, a powerful and simpler attack. Actually, it's so simple, as you will shortly see, that uh, an attacker can DOS uh, a Cisco router using just a single packet. This is a joint work with Eitan Menachem, um, Ariel Weisel, and Yulval Elovich from Ben Gurion University. Okay, just a quick introduction about myself before, before uh, uh, we start. Uh, as I said, my name is Gabi. I'm a fellow at the National Lab in Israel called the National Electronic Warfare Research and Simulation Center. Uh, we provide high-end research and consulting services. Uh, I myself am involved in, in uh, network security. I'm also an academic researcher and lecturer at the Technion in Israel where I uh, teach and research network security. <coughs> Okay, so just me, let me give you just a brief overview of what you're about uh, to hear today. Uh, the target of many routing attacks is actually uh, control or uh, uh, alter or poison in some way the routing tables of a remote router uh, without actually having uh, to go through the trouble of uh, actually owning the router itself. Uh, the attack I'm going to present today uh, does just that. Um, as I said, it, it is presented on a new, it is based on a newly uh, found vulnerability of the OSPF protocol. And um, um, it actually allows to own the routing table um, of uh, other routers within the routing domain while using just a single compromised routing within that domain. Routing domain can be, for example, um, an ISP network, an enterprise network. And uh, this means that uh, an attacker only needs to compromise just a single router within that uh, domain uh, in order to compromise all the other, rout all the other routing tables uh, within that domain. Uh, so why is this uh, so desirable to compromise or own the routing tables of other routers? Uh, if you own the routing table of another router, uh, you actually uh, can control the path uh, uh, a packet takes through the, the network and if you can do that you actually can do many nice tricks with it. For example, you can induce uh, black holes, create network cuts, simply partition the network. Uh, you can uh, do traffic diversion, make the packet go through longer uh, routes in order to facilitate eavesdropping or increase the load on the network and so on and so on. So who is vulnerable to the attack? Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, the attack exploits a vulnerability embedded in, in, the, in the OSPF standard, actually in RFC 2328. So uh, this means that potentially many commercial vendors may be vulnerable to this attack. And indeed, currently now, we know of several uh, uh, router vendors which are affected. Here are they in alphabetical order. Um, actually, uh, this talk is a culmination of a multi-vendor effort uh, to patch this uh, vulnerability and I would like to thank the CERTCC for their, F for their coordination of this effort. Um, actually, I haven't personally verified uh, all of the, the attack on all of these router vendors, but I will focus on the second half of my talk on perhaps uh, the most interesting vendor here, uh, which is of course uh, uh, Cisco. So this is ja the agenda uh, of the talk. Uh, first, I will uh, walk you through through some of the, uh, the fundamentals of OSPF and how it works. 
Then I will describe the, uh, some of the OSPF security strength and, uh, and then of course the newly found vulnerability and attack and as I said the at then the attacks effects on a uh, Cisco router. Okay so let's start with the big picture internet routing and, uh, and how it works. Uh, so probably as many of you uh, already know uh, uh, the networks and routers of the internet are actually clustered into uh, uh, groups which are called autonomous systems. Um, each autonomous system is uh, uh, administered by a single network operator or maybe a few network operators. Uh, there are some I think 45,000 uh, autonomous systems on the internet today. So this means that actually the routing on the internet works in two levels. The higher level is the inter autonomous system routing which means that uh, uh, the autonomous systems uh, through which the packet traverses is determined. This is done using the BGP protocol. Okay and, and in the, at the lower level uh, there is the routing within each autonomous system which of course determine the path the packet will take uh, through each autonomous system. And uh, now this is done independently within it, each autonomous system and each uh, network operator is free to choose which routing protocol uh, to do this routing within the autonomous system. The most popular choices are um, OSPF, RIP and ISIS and as I said I will be talking about uh, OSPF uh, for this talk. Okay. Uh, so let's review some of the OSPF uh, fundamentals. Uh, so how OSPF works? OSPF works by having each router advertise uh, a link state, meaning that each router advertise, advertises who, who are its immediate neighbors, to whom uh, it is connected directly to. Uh, this advertisement is called the link state advertisement or LSA for short. And um, the LSAs are actually flooded throughout uh, the autonomous system hop by hop meaning that uh, each router advertises its LSA to all its immediate neighbors. They advertise it to all their immediate neighbors and so on and so forth until all the, all the routers receive this LSA. This means that uh, each and every LSA, uh, each and every router receives all uh, the other uh, LSAs uh, routers. And now every router can actually uh, compile its view of the autonomous system topology. Based on this view, um, uh, the router can calculate its routing table. Now let's see an illustration of how it works. Uh, let's say this is our autonomous system. Uh, we have a bunch of routers and networks connected to each other. Uh, now let's uh, okay. Let's assume now that uh, R1 advertises its LSA which of course is uh, distributed or flooded throughout the autonomous system. Um, now every router which receives the LSA uh, keeps, it, keeps it in a special data structure called the LSA database or LSA DB. And now every router knows that R1 in this example um, is connected on one interface to this local area network and on the other interface to R2. Uh, when R2 uh, advertises its uh, LSA then um, uh, it is of course again flooded throughout the autonomous system and uh, now everybody, kno everybody knows that R2 is connected uh, on one interface to R1 and on the other two interfaces to these two other routers and so on and so forth and this is how uh, each and every router composes its view of the autonomous system topology and as I said based on this view the routing table is calculated. Now uh, for simplicity reasons I don't mention here uh, the notion of areas. Uh, uh, I assume here that the autonomous system here is composed of just a single area. Okay. Um, a few more details about uh, an LSA. LSA is advertised periodically by default every half an hour. Um, every LSA has a sequence number which is incremented sequ sequentially with every new advertised instance. Uh, this means that uh, newer instances of an LSA with higher sequence number will always uh, take precedence over older instances of the same LSA with lower sequence number. And in addition there are several types of uh, LSAs. Uh, the most important one is router LSA which 
actually describes the links of a router. Um, um, there are several other uh, uh, types of LSA, for example, network LSA, which describes the links of a given network, but I will not uh, uh, consider them uh, for this talk. Uh, throughout this talk, when I say an LSA, I mean router LSA. Okay, and uh, now for the attacker. Um, in our research, we have, we have assumed that the attacker is an insider meaning that it, it has been able to infiltrate uh, the routing domain, the autonomous system, and it now and is now uh, controlling just a single router within the autonomous system uh, with an arbitrary location. Uh, uh, it can be not necessarily be a core router, it can be just a, a remote access router somewhere in the autonomous system. Now we needed to assume uh, this uh, because um, we wanted uh, to search for OSPF attacks. In order for, to search for OSPF attacks, the attacker needs to send OSPF messages to at least uh, one other router within the autonomous system. Now there are uh, cases where uh, the attacker can do it from the outside. In such cases, the, then the attacker doesn't need uh, to take control over, uh, um, over the router within the autonomous system. And the goal of the attacker um, is to significantly control the routing tables of the other uh, routers within the autonomous system. Okay, it controls just a single router, and now he wants, he wishes to uh, control the routing tables of all the other routers. Now, let me just uh, recap for you some of the OSPF security strength and uh, why it has been so hard uh, for or even impossible in the general case for an attacker um, to uh, achieve such a goal. So here is an example. Uh, let's say uh, we have a, this autonomous system and we have an attacker that managed to control, take control of one of the routers up there and uh, he now wishes to poison some of the routing tables of some of the routers within the autonomous system. Uh, specifically, we will be uh, focusing on the router there on the right, which uh, the attacker now wishes to poison its LSA database. Um, in the, the router now has a complete and correct view of the, uh, of the autonomous system topology, and let's say that the attacker now uh, wishes to uh, 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 poison the, the routing table or poison the LSA database of this router by uh, disconnecting the victim router down there um, so that the, the poisoned router will not be able to route uh, to this victim router. Let's say it serves some, some purpose for the attacker. Now uh, the most uh, simple way uh, uh, the, attacker can, the attacker can achieve this, this is by simply sending out a false LSA on behalf of the attacker, or, oh, excuse me, on behalf of the victim, saying that the victim has no links whatsoever and is not connected to any other router within the autonomous system. This will achieve uh, the goal of the attacker. Now the first uh, um, security strength is that every LSA is flooded throughout the autonomous system. This already you know. Uh, this means that once the attacker uh, floods or advertises the LSA, the false LSA on behalf of the victim, it will simply be flooded throughout the autonomous system. As of itself, this is not a security strength, but, but it does mean that eventually the victim will receive the false LSA advertised on its behalf. Now, uh, this poses a problem for the attacker uh, because of the second security strength, which means that, uh, uh, which is the fightback mechanism. Uh, the fightback mechanism is defined in the OSPF standard and uh, it says that uh, once a router receives a false LSA advertised on its behalf, the router will, uh, the victim router will immediately send out uh, a correct LSA with a higher sequence number and uh, this is the fightback LSA which of course will cancel out the false LSA because it has a, se a higher sequence number. This is the fightback. So in this example, uh, the victim router will immediately uh, send out the fightback LSA and this will revert the attack's effect. The attack will, uh, 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 will have a non-persistent effect on the, on the LSA databases of all, uh, all, of all the other routers. 
Um, okay, so uh, an ad another attack venue the attacker might wishes to take um, is to simply send out uh, the advertisement, the false adver advertisement directly to the router wishes to poison. Uh, this is done using uh, simply by uh, unicasting the packet uh, directly to the to that router. Now here comes uh, another security strength of OSPF, with, which is LSA authentication, which means that uh, every link in the autonomous system is associated with a secret, which is shared among all the routers, all all the directly attached router, uh, directly attached to the to the to this link. And uh, th these routers uh, uh, use this uh, LSA, use this secret in order to authenticate uh, the LSAs they share or they exchange among themselves. In our example, the attacker uh, knows uh, uh, the secrets of all the links that are directly attached to it. In this example, secret X, but he doesn't know the other secrets. For example, secret Y. Uh, so this means that uh, the router to be poisoned will not be able to authenticate. Uh, the false uh, LSA advertised uh, by the attacker and uh, it will simply be discarded. Okay, and actually this means that uh, an attacker um, is not able to poison or persistently poison in a general, uh, in a general case um, the LSA database of one router by uh, falsifying the, uh, an LSA of another router, of a third router. Okay, because once he d uh, he he does that, the third router, the other router, will simply fight back, making the attack's effect non-persistent. Okay. So the common conception uh, is that uh, an attacker, even if it is an insider, um, it simply cannot significantly and persistently uh, poison the routing table of a router he does not control. Um, Excuse me. Now this this has been uh, the conception indeed uh, up until uh, 2011. This is when we uh, published our first part of uh, our research, and then uh, we presented the first general uh, technique to evade feedback and thereby persistently falsifying LSAs uh, advertised on behalf of some other router. Uh, we call this technique uh, disguised LSA. You are welcome, welcome to uh, check it out on the web. And, and this technique also relies on, on a vulnerability uh, uh, embedded in the OSPF uh, standout. Now in the new attack, uh, we also uh, also ha uh, um, affords the ability to persistently falsify LSAs on behalf of some other router. It also uh, exploits a vulnerability which is embedded in the uh, OSPF standout. However, it it, it, uh, it does offer some uh, added advantages, which is uh, first it offers uh, full poisoning, meaning that. We can now, using the new technique, we can new, new attack. I'm going to present. We can uh, poison 100% of the routers within the autonomous system, which and this is including the victim itself. Uh, meaning, uh, the victim itself uh, will now believe the false uh, uh, the false LSA. We will be advertising on its behalf. And. Um, uh, the previous attack only uh, poisoned just uh, some of the routers with within the autonomous system, certainly not the victims. And the other one is that it's uh, simplicity. As you will shortly see, the attack is that simple. It's embarrassingly simple. Um, and it only requires just a single packet. The actual false LSA uh, the attacker will advertise. Okay. So uh, finally, let's dive into the details. Um, and here's a snapshot of the LSA header, which I've taken directly from the RFC. And here you can see uh, all the fields in the LSA header. You, we have the, here the, the age of the LSA, which is simply the, the number of seconds elapsed since its uh, origination. Uh, we have some options and then the, uh, the LSA type. As I mentioned, we will be considering uh, an LSA 
of one type which is the router LSA and then uh, uh, these two fields link state ID and advertising router which I will be discussing uh, shortly and then the sequence number which I've, I've already mentioned and then the check sum of the LSA and the length of the LSA. Now uh, in section 12.1 uh, in the RFC um, it says that uh, an LSA is uniquely identified by these two fields advertising router and link state ID. Actually I'm bluffing here a little. Um, the RFC says that uh, an LSA is identified by three fields these two and uh, the LSA type. Now since uh, we are considering only router LSAs I will just uh, ignore the LSA type uh, for simplicity reasons. So from uh, our point of view the an LSA is identified by these two fields advertising router and link state ID. Let's see what they are. A link state ID actually uh, identifies the part of the autonomous system that is being described uh, by the LSA. In the case of a router LSA, since the LSA describes the links of a given router, then the link state ID would be the ID of that router. Uh, the ID of the router is simply uh, an IP address of one of its interfaces. Um, and the adver advertising router field uh, identifies uh, the router that originated the LSA. Uh, now, since uh, the LSA of a given router uh, is always originated by that by that LSA, but excuse me, by that router itself, no other router will ever originate uh, uh, originate uh, LSA on behalf of some other router. So uh, this field should also, should also be the, uh, the ID of the router. Now this means that both fields, these two fields should have the same uh, exact uh, uh, value. The identity of the router uh, of the LSA. Simple enough. However, interestingly enough, uh, the OSPF specification uh, does not specify a check to verify this on LSA reception. Once a router, a router receives this LSA, there is no uh, sanity check that uh, verifies that indeed these two fields are the same. So let's see what kind of interesting uh, stuff a router uh, an attacker might be able to do with, uh, with this piece of information. So this is the, the basic vulnerability which the attack uh, relies on. Um, at least the, the first part of the vulnerability. Uh, so according to the OSPF specification section 13.4, a router fights back only if it receives a false LSA in which the advertising router is equal to the router's own, I, own a router ID. Meaning that once the router receives a false LSA, it will um, it will fight back only if the advertising router field in that LSA equals to its own uh, uh, ID, its own router ID, regardless of, uh, of the value of the link state ID. This means that uh, actually um, if uh, an attacker sends out a false LSA uh, with the following header, then there will, uh, no fight back will uh, will be triggered meaning that if the header contains a link state ID that does equal to the victim's router ID but the advertising router does not equal to the victim's router ID uh, then no fight back will be triggered whatsoever. And uh, this is despite the fact that uh, this LSA claims to describe the very links of that victim router. No fight back will be triggered. So actually the basic attack um, works as follows. Uh, this is, uh, let's assume that the attacker is up there and he now wishes to uh, um, uh, send out a false LSA on behalf of some of the victim uh, in the middle there. Uh, so it will just simply send out a false LSA with the LSA header we just uh, seen. And the LSA will just be, prop will be flooded throughout the autonomous system all routers will actually install uh, the false LSA in their database. Uh, this includes now the victim and now no, tr no fight back will be triggered. Actually 
again, the, uh, the victim will actually install the false LSA in its own da database. The LSA will actually advertise on its behalf. And, not, and moreover, it will continue to flood uh, this LSA to all of its uh, neighbors. And this is how we get 100% uh, poisoning of all the autonomous system. Now, it's simple enough. However, it's not that simple. We have a problem here. Uh, remember section 12.1 of the RFC? And, uh, an LSA is identified by both fields, link state ID and advertising router. This means that the false LSA we just advertised has a different identifier than the valid LSA, the actual uh, correct LSA of the victim router. So uh, because they differ in the, the advertising field. So indeed uh, the attacker managed uh, to send out a false LSA and we did manage to uh, avoid the, the fight back but it seems that the attack is futile because uh, actually uh, uh, we have managed to falsify an LSA that does not really belong to the victim because they have different, different identifiers. Okay and this is what I just said. Um, and now for the second part of the vulnerability um, uh, which is actually an ambiguity in the OSPF uh, specification. In section 16.1 according to the standard uh, during the routing table calculation when uh, an LSA uh, when the router fetches or looks up LSA in its own LSA databases its own LSA database the an LSA is looked up uh, based on the vertex ID only. Uh, in this context uh, by, the vertex, uh, by the vertex ID the RFC means the link state ID. So we actually have here uh, a bit of uh, an ambiguity. In the general case um, in, uh, on section uh, 12.1 uh, the RFC said that actually uh, uh, the LSA is identified by both fields link state ID and, adver and advertising router. However, as you can, uh, you can see here on section 16.1 uh, uh, during the routing table calculation the LSA is identified only uh, by the link state ID during its lookup in the LSA database. So we have an ambiguity here and actually if we just now step back a minute and uh, review what we have after the attack then we have after, after uh, the attacker advertised or flooded the, uh, the false LSA on behalf of the victim, we have in, uh, in every router uh, two LSAs having the same exact link state ID. The false LSA and the valid LSA. They have both the same exact link state ID which is equal to the victim's own uh, router ID. So this gives rise to the following question during the routing table calculation when uh, the LSA of the victim router is fetched which LSA will be fetched? The, uh, the false LSA or the valid LSA? Of course if uh, the false LSA uh, will be fetched then we are home free. If, it's, uh, if the valid LSA will be fetched so, so uh, actually the, the whole attack is futile. Of course uh, now the RFC does not give us an answer uh, to this question. So the answer is undefined as far as the standard is concerned. Uh, so this is actually an implementation dependent uh, uh, answer. Uh, every implementation might do a, might fetch the other uh, the, f the false LSA or the valid LSA. Now as you was, as you have uh, seen at the beginning indeed many uh, commercial routers indeed fetch the false LSA making the attack effect the, f the, the attack successful. And um, indeed uh, we will now be talking about the, the case of the Cisco of the Cisco router and let's see how the effects went on, on a Cisco router. So uh, in order to validate the attack we use the GNS, GNS3 uh, emulation software which is a software which can, which can emulate uh, uh, Cisco's IOS real production image which is supposed to be run on a router on a PC. 
Uh, we use the Cisco's iOS 1501M, which is almost the latest iOS version, and uh, we use the SCAPI for uh, to craft uh, the attack packet. Okay, so this is our first finding. Um, once we have advertised a, a false LSA on behalf of the victim router using a higher sequence number than the uh, sequence number of the valid LSA, um, then uh, not only that the false LSA was indeed installed in the routers on the, in the LSA database of all the routers, but it actually replaced uh, the valid LSA um, of, uh, of the victim router. And this happens in all the routers including the victim itself. Meaning the victim itself erases its own LSA from its own LSA database and it now replaces, replaces it with, its, with, our, uh, with the false LSA we advertise on its behalf. Which is qu was quite interesting. Here is an example of uh, uh, a snapshot of uh, an let's say database uh, from from our experiments. So here you can see uh, uh, the LSA database of the victim router. Here you have uh, the ID is 37.3, and here you can see the valid LSA, which uh, has a link state ID of 37.3 and advertising router of 37.3 uh, as it should. This is before the attack and after the attack again the link state ID of 37.3 and here you can see the false uh, LSA which, which have uh, a link state ID of 37.3 and an advertising router of 27.11. This is some kind of uh, an arbitrary number I've chosen. And uh, indeed uh, the LSA database after the attack uh, does not include the, the valid LSA. It was simply replaced. Okay, so indeed um, all the routers um, consider the false LSA during the routing table calculation. Actually they have no choice because the valid LSA is erased. And indeed the, all the routers except the victim itself uh, um, calculate uh, uh, the new routes in accordance with the new information in the false LSA, except the victim. The victim had a much more interesting uh, uh, behavior. The victims actually erase all its uh, routing table. Uh, at, at first glance, they, it, it was seen, it, is, it seemed like uh, he just committed suicide uh, <laughs> following the attack. But uh, actually, uh, after we looked at it, uh, uh, we saw that indeed uh, uh, the victim router also takes into consideration during its routing table calculation the false, uh, of course, the false LSA. It doesn't have the valid LSA. Uh, and it does uh, calculate the routes correctly, but somehow uh, it does not install uh, the routes uh, in its routing table. This means that uh, all the OSPF route, uh, routes uh, are now erased from the routing table and this means that all the routes that are, that are based on OSPF routes, for example some BGP routes are also erased from the, from the table. So actually this leaves the, the router, the victim router with almost empty uh, routing table. Which makes it of course uh, a useless router with an empty, uh, a router with an empty routing table it's actually useless. So um, and we find out that uh, this erasure actually uh, was quite persistent. Um, the victims could not simply recover from this erasure uh, spontaneously. Uh, it can, uh, uh, the only way uh, the victim could recover is by simply either uh, rebooting the router or reloading the, uh, the router or uh, by simply just uh, um, erasing the OSPF configuration and then enable it, enable it uh, once again. So this is, was a very persistent erasure of the routing table and uh, now the nice trick about it is that the attacker itself can now un uh, can actually undo uh, the, the, this erasure and actually undo the entire uh, uh, attack effects by simply just sending another false LSA 
but this time with the correct advertising router uh, ID and then it will just uh, trigger a fight back by the victim router uh, with a higher sequence number and then uh, this will cancel out uh, the false LSA we, we sent out previously and everything will be back to normal. So this is uh, actually a nice, uh, nice feature of this attack where the attacker can just uh, like a on and off switch can uh, uh, can actually uh, make the attack uh, go away. Okay, uh, so this was the the validation of the uh, of the Cisco router. Uh, now to recap, just uh, let me give you some two examples, uh, two applica uh, application examples of uh, the attack. Uh, one example is a uh, black hole. Let's say the attacker wishes now uh, uh, to create a black hole within the autonomous system uh, for a specific uh, external destination. So uh, it can, uh, for example, uh, send out a false LSA on behalf of uh, the victim router saying that uh, the victim router now is directly connected to some external uh, uh, destination, for example, the IP range of Google.com. And this uh, will eventually uh, make all the packets in the autonomous system uh, uh, be, uh, will be rerouted uh, to, the, to the victim itself. And now since the victim actually has no routing table, of course it will become a black hole. Another example um, is a traffic diversion. Um, take ex uh, simply j by changing the routes of, uh, of a uh, uh, the route uh, the packet take. For example, in this uh, scenario, we have the green uh, the green path, and let's say the attacker wishes uh, to change it, and uh, so that uh, the new route will pass through it. So in this uh, particular scenario what the attacker can do is just uh, send a false LSA on behalf of the route of the victim router saying that the victim router cannot uh, is not uh, is now disconnected from the network it has no links whatsoever so uh, it will just simply advertise it and uh, in this scenario um, the new route will actually traverse the, the attacker and now the attacker can uh, 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 eavesdrop on the on the traffic or uh, launch man in the middle attack. Okay, and this was just a couple of uh, attacks on uh, uh, attack examples. Okay, so to conclude, actually, uh, what I've presented here is a new attack on OSPF uh, routing protocol. Um, using this attack, um, if the attacker uh, uh, can compromise just a single router within the autonomous system. It actually can compromise uh, all the routing tables within that autonomous system. And the main takeaway I want to I want you to take from uh, this talk is that the integrity of your routing domain uh, depends on the security of the least secure router within your domain. Uh, this means that you need to secure the, your route your uh, remote access router in the remote branch. Uh, as much as you secure your core router in your main branch. So uh, that's what did, this, was, this was my talk. Um, I would be happy to, uh, to answer any questions you might have. Yes. But you would need the uh, 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 the secret of uh, the link. There is, there is the LSA authentication. Okay. okay. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble. There is no OSPF authentication anymore. Ah. Okay, if there is no uh, OSPF authentication, then actually uh, you can actually probably can do it, uh, do this attack uh, from actually outside the autonomous system, maybe even send it remotely. Uh, so then you're in deep, <laughs> deep trouble. <laughs> yeah.
No. No, there is no, uh, there is no reason for that. Actually, uh, uh, Juniper and Cisco, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, patch this vulnerability by actually looking for uh, this kind of LSAs. Okay, they actually uh, did a sanity check to verify that indeed the link state ID is equal to the advertising router. No, the, uh, there is a, a very, uh, a very distinct reason why the, uh, they were in here because of the, there are other LSA, other types of LSA in which these two fields are not the same. For a router LSA, these two fields must be the same. For other uh, uh, types of LSA, they not necessarily be the same. Okay, so thank you very much.